Aries, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for July 2018 in Aries. It is a month where your ruling planet is going to go retrograde along with Mercury going retrograde, Chiron going retrograde, Jupiter coming direct, and an eclipse. So this is a month where movement is definitely happening, but most of the movement this month is not that forward action that you like. This is a month where I feel like a lot of lights come on in your mental, emotional, spiritual house, but you can't exactly figure out how to get to that room, right? So it's going to be a very interesting month in terms of your action right but the realizations are gonna be there this month now whenever your ruling planet goes retrograde you have this sense where you're not moving at your full speed necessarily it doesn't mean that you have to hold back on everything but it does mean especially with mars retrograde that the time to initiate to start something new work on a super big project try and force something forward because remember aries you are ruled by the ram and the ram says i will just put my head down and go through this right this is going to be a month where the wall is not breaking down so you're just hitting your head so that makes no sense this month. Instead, this month in July, with all of this retrograde energy, including your ruling planet, it is a beautiful month for you to step into what needs to be redone, revised, re-edited, re-looked at, and reconsidered most specifically with that Chiron going retrograde. So let's jump in here and let's just talk about this month, okay? Now, at the beginning of the month on the 5th, we've got Chiron, who's now in your sign, going retrograde. So he's going to flip back through and do a retrograde. Now, Chiron, the transiting Chiron, being in your sign is already these questions of why am I here? What am I doing? What's my purpose? Why am I really participating in certain things, right? This is a question. And Aries, you have been on the search for the purpose. So many of you, I'm sure, have been feeling the shift at work or the shift in, I need to be doing what I'm built to do. And you've kind of been figuring those pieces, puzzles out because it's a brand new identity. With Chiron and Aries, we're fighting for a new identity. And that is something you've definitely been doing. Now with Chiron going retrograde and then moving back until Pisces, all the way really until February of 2019, you're going to have some time to be looking at why, why am I blocked here? What are the pieces of me that will not let me move forward? Almost as if you're creating your own limitations to this brand new identity, right? What are the beliefs that you still have that you're holding on to that are actually holding you back, right? The other thing I think is really important with Chiron retrograde to get into because it's still a retrograde is to go back go back to looking at where you're at in your own faith right faith and identity have a very very close tie to them that does not mean religion that means faith and i heard this beautiful example of in um shamans and shamanistic practice they don't think that there is anything extra crispy special about a plant or an animal having a spirit. That's not brand new news to them. They just believe and work within the energy. Where are you at with that in your life? Where do you have a limiting belief that something can or cannot happen? And so you're not just in the flow with it. This is a wonderful energy to be doing that, okay? Now on the ninth, Venus, our planet of love and harmony and just all things sensual and beautiful and very much so the opposite energy to you. So always interesting to interact with is going to be moving into Virgo. This places her firmly in the sixth house. Now the first thing I think of, especially as a Taurus, right, being Venus ruled, is that Venus coming into the sixth house of health, well-being, daily routines, work, co-workers, all these things, is it's summertime. These co-workers are going to be bringing in these tasty treats, and Venus loves some food. She loves luxury. She loves indulgence. So you could be eating a little bit more, right? You're like, yes, Diane, I have never had a macaroni cupcake. I must, okay? So just pay attention to that because Venus can very much so be very indulgent with this energy. Plus, just a day later, Jupiter is coming direct. So these two in their full direct power really can have you going on tasting a little something. But enjoy rich, beautiful, colorful foods that fuel your body. Because remember, Virgo is a perfectionist and they're health nuts typically. So you can use this energy to say, okay, maybe I'm only having half of a macaroni cupcake wrapped in bacon, of course if that's a thing you're into. Um, but maybe I'm going to also have some of this brilliant, beautiful heirloom tomato salad that I've never had before. So use it wisely. Now, the other thing I help th think that this helps to do is to bring some harmony to um, a workplace, 
right? So if you've been having trouble with a coworker or an employee or something like that, or just things have been going well, this is kind of a celebration party, beautifying kind of energy. So really look out and enjoy that. And I also think too, if you have already been, if you have a business or a project that you've been working on, you're not starting anything new, you've been working on it, this could also bring, um, a little diplomacy to the table so it's more easy to receive what you're trying to put out there it's just a lovely energy like i said on the 10th the very next day jupiter is coming direct over there in scorpio so in your eighth house now when jupiter our biggest benefic planet and venus is our smaller benefic planet when jupiter comes direct see he's so generous even when he's retrograde that you're still getting little blessings you're still getting some little gifts right i um, mean you're still picking up some wisdom but it's delayed it may come a little bit more slowly now jupiter is getting ready to unwind so the things that have been waiting for you up in this eighth house can start to come to you in jupiter's normal giving fashion so this is the eighth house if you've been wanting to study astrology um you, things in your relationship, maybe um, finances coming to maybe a partner or spouse, or maybe you're getting that financial aid or that loan or something like that. There are just multiple opportunities for things to be coming alive. Your self-confidence, you can find that you're a lot more confident because you have more wisdom. There's a lot of psychological understanding that I think has come to you. There's a different level of intimacy that has come to you and expansion since Jupiter's been here. And that change in intimacy and maybe even a change in partnership has allowed you to expand out in the world more confidently or in a different way than maybe you were before. Now, I do think too, if you have something going on or you've had something going on, on where it's um, legal, taxes, insurance, some kind of settlement and inheritance, something like that. You could definitely see that coming your way absolutely for sure. So kind of keep that in mind as well. If you've been waiting to hear back about getting into a school, this could also be a time that you could start to hear that as well. Now on the 12th, we get to our next piece of excitement for the month, which is our eclipse that we've got going on. And this is a cool kind of odd eclipse. We don't traditionally have three solar eclipses in a year, but this time we're going to. So it's pretty exciting. And this is the odd man out. It's in Cancer. We've been dealing with Leo Aquarian energy and this one's in Cancer. So throwing it just in there for you. Now this solar eclipse is gonna be happening, like I said, in Cancer in your fourth house and this is at 20 degrees okay so map that out on your chart your fourth house though what this gives us the indicator of is that you have got some change because remember the solar eclipse is still our new moon for the month okay so we're going to plant seeds of intention um fresh new starts and beginnings could be happening here a breath of fresh air could be blowing through here but this change could be lasting and be coming about over the next six months so for some of you aries in the next six months some of you for a year could be getting ready to make a move or your household changes or maybe here's the other thing I think of in tandem with this Jupiter coming direct now for some of us it does mean that we will help our elders or someone in our life or our families maybe transition to their next life something like that could definitely be on the agenda but we're going to have a home family real estate property shift that is definitely on the agenda whether that be that you welcome someone to your house you welcome them from your house you move whatever that happens to look like this solar eclipse is going to bring domestic change okay now here's one of the other things i kind of think about is that maybe what happens is especially if you have a partnership or a roommate or something like that you could have somebody who's just very in your business throughout July and you're not really enjoying that and you might have to tell them hey cool your jets but remember we're in a heavy retrograde season right now so maybe the best way to handle this is not to launch the next world war but to you know find another way to talk to this person or let things play out sometimes sometimes your fellow humans are just on one they're just having a day they're a little bit out of whack it really has nothing to do with you okay so if you find that or you're finding frustrations in your home figure out if this is the war to win is this the one right like really ask yourself that question okay now when we get to the 22nd of the month we have the sun moving into leo uh oh leo time <laughs> we're gonna move into the house of joy for you the fifth house the house of joy play self-expression children right investments all of these things fall in this fifth house and on the exact same day we've got venus who's there in the sixth in a sextile so when the planets have sex that's good for us with jupiter who's over here in the eighth so i'm telling you i really feel like aries at this particular time you could be like look i 
I need to travel, I need to play, I need to just do something different. Maybe you're having a different conversation with children. Like this house is going to be lit up and your level of expression, your level of need to express yourself and your level of need to feel free of a couple things and feel good, feel relaxed, feel like you can enjoy your space, right? It's gonna be different. Now, the other thing I was thinking about at this time is that you could be, the, the word vacation keeps coming for me. So whether you're going on a vacation or maybe you have a partner or your children are going on vacation someplace and so it's like your world kind of quiets and smooths out for a middle. For a minute, this is kind of a quieter energy. But then right behind that on the 26th, we've got Mercury, our planet of communication, taking its retrograde over here in Leo as well. And it's going to be there all the way until August. So this will be at 11 degrees of Leo, okay? So here you are, you're trying to max your Relax, maybe redo things, relook at things, relook at your daily structure, relook at am I living joyfully? Am I living an expressive way? Right? Is does this feel like me? Then Mercury goes retrograde. Helps this helps the rethinking. This helps the replanning. This helps the re-editing. It helps every single one of those things. Now the other thing that it helps do as well is if you needed help connecting with your children, you needed help getting pregnant, you needed help with an adoption, you needed help with a romantic partner, any of these kinds of things that come from the fifth house you get some help now mercury is infamous for bringing back exes ex lovers ex whatever right there it just it happens more times than it doesn't and i always put up the post that mercury retrograde just because you meet an ex or something during a mercury retrograde you cannot claim being a retrosexual okay if you go there go there with an intent right what are you doing why are you looking over there what is it over here that may still have value or that you need to clean up so think about it there could be some miscommunications happening remember mercury's over all technology communication devices and things like that and sometimes i'm telling you if the old job or the old ex pops up in your life maybe you don't really need to respond to that email or that text message just decide if the value is really really worth it to you in the direction that you're trying to go now, speaking of moving yourself into direction, we've already got Mars who's retrograde. He's retrograde all month long, but then we get to the end of the month on the 27th. So your action is slowed down by Mars. We get to this lunar eclipse that is illuminating your 11th house. So it's over here in Aries. Friends, groups, long range goals, technology, humanitarian causes, your hopes, wishes, and long range dreams that you have for yourself, right? This lunar eclipse, might be showing you that you're not on track with where you're trying to go and that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong it means you've just got to adjust the track right mars is also retrograde over here allow these energies to work in tandem maybe you've got to start networking and be aligned in a different way people or with people that are like you aries right if you just became a parent and you're feeling like you're in the house all the time where are the parenting groups and i'm sorry that maybe you don't like other people but you have to go out there and meet them right you may need to align your social structure or or maybe it's debt maybe you're working on that maybe you're thinking oh down the road i really want to have this job and granted you can't go out and fix everything and take every class today this is not the season for initiation but you can get an idea and a path kind of in line here right there's a lot to let go of this month and you will only let it go by doing the revisions and the relooking over so if you feel stuck you feel slowed down this month aries i'm telling you it is definitely a month for that and it is nothing to be worried about use your retrograde time beautifully if there are friends in your world that don't align anymore if there are groups or associations that you don't align with anymore feel free to review that and be willing to let that go because the universe will not leave a hole it never leaves a hole it will fill it with what you need next as long as you have the courage to let some things go and let things be illuminated and here's the last thing i want to say about this because this is a mercury slash mars retrograde over here in this area of your chart Aries, you might have had a plan for your life for a very long time. You thought things were going to look a certain way, and now you have arrived a year later, and things look a lot different, and that requires a reformation of your long-range goals and plans, right? It just does. So if it's time for that, let's update. Let's get current with the reality that you're actually living in and form some goals based on that, okay?
I love you guys so, so, so much. Happy summer. Enjoy yourselves out there. Enjoy July. If I can help you, come visit me at stormygrace.com. Also, like me on the Facebook page. I'm going to be doing a few more live things, and I'll definitely keep you guys posted on all the cool things that are coming to Stormy Grace. So I love you guys. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.